Okay, we just got done listening to his Verastar speaker cables. The XLRs were Shunyata Sigma version 2, and the power cords are Omega QR on the amplifiers. I want you to go first and talk about your cables. <laughs> I'm not going to. You first. Because <laughs> you know the other stuff. Okay, before yeah. I give my impressions, keep in mind cable loom. The cable loom is important and in my opinion can easily give you a lack of confidence with certain cables okay and it has in my opinion a lot to do with the synergy amongst the entire like between all cables in the system sure. yeah. so my impressions are going to be based on the fact that we're using his speaker cables with Shunyata the rest of the cables being Shunyata so keep that in mind okay what I found was the sound stage was not as open I didn't find it as huge and tall and wide. That's one impression I got. It was mellower sounding. The presentation sounded more relaxed, a little more pulled back. Mm -hmm. That's okay. one thing I found. Okay. Um, the so the sense of space for me, knowing my speakers, I felt that it wasn't as tall. It wasn't as and again, it could be just maybe that a sense of falseness that my other cables are giving me. There's no way of knowing what's true in terms of the presentation. Now, I don't know, um, you know, it, it, what's accurate at this point. I'm just reporting what I'm hearing when I compare both cable cable systems. Um, the, of course, the cable, in my opinion, also gave me the sense of the law of diminishing returns because we had a cable that's $40,000 in the form of the Generation 5 Opus a $10,000 speaker cable, Shunyata Sigma version 2, and then your cables are how much? $7,000. So $7,000. So the law of diminishing returns is a real thing. There's no way around it. I heard the presentation and I was scratching my head thinking, well, I mean, I like what I heard, but I was thinking, damn, this sounds pretty good when you consider the money that it is, I mean, it was pretty damn good. And if I did, if I didn't have the cables I have, I could have easily been like, "This is perfect. This is awesome. This is exactly what I was looking for." And you realize that to get that extra five, ten percent in performance mm -hmm. costs you an arm and a leg. And to, that, to me, is one of the biggest things about this cable that it really made me look at myself in the mirror and understand the price performance that you are a big, big advocate. Right? You're a big advocate of price performance, mm -hmm. and there's no doubt in my mind that the cable has that. The question is, do you want to pay the extra 30 grand, 33 grand, for whatever the Opus did, mm. whether it's a plus or a minus, that's up to personal opinion. To each, It's got to do with each, each person, of course. Uh, but I don't know, man. I, 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 I personally, if I'm keeping it real, if, I, if I'm looking for value, I think his cables are better. If I'm looking for that value performance, no question. I think his cables win. But if I want to extend and get a little more of something, to me right now, the Shunyata is leading the race overall. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I believe that. Yeah, now, interesting. Of course. Now, that's my take. Now, yeah. And the reason why I don't have the Opus taking the lead is because I believe it has to do with the rest of the cable system. Mix and matching, again, that's what I think is right now knocking down the Opus Generation 5 speaker cable. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, I got to say, um, I'm a little surprised. <laughs> I'm a little surprised. I heard my cables absolutely fucking embarrassed both of those. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. The yeah. image went bigger. And finally became natural. What it sounded like to me was that both of those cables sounded like I'm in control of the signal and you heard artifacts from each one. I heard artifacts from the Shunyata. I heard artifacts from, definitely heard artifacts from the, the transparent. But it was like the Viristar cables just like I'm insignificant. I'm out of the way. I'm not important. Whereas the other ones are like, screw the speakers and the amp. Here's me. I, I carry the signal, and here's me, and here's and I'm in control of the signal. And, and, and so they made themselves 
apparent to me very much. And there was artifacts. I could hear, I, there's a sonic signature on both of those. There was yes. not a sonic signature on my cables, on the Vera Star cables that I heard. It let the amps and the speakers breathe and be themselves and be natural. I heard timber in the voice of the male, which I did not hear, which was crazy because originally I thought it was a speaker thing. I, I was thinking, man, they can't do upper mid bass or, or uh, lower mid bass very well. Like, like um, I'm not hearing any timber in, in tonality in his voice that makes it sound human. Okay. When the Vera Stars went in, I heard that in, his, in that vocal, the male vocal. And I was like, wow, okay, so it sounds more natural. Um, and then, uh, and so to me, I was more connected with the music. It sounded more natural. It okay. sounded more real. Um, there, there was, and, and the, the sound stage was infinite. So the fact that you said that it's a smaller I, sound stage. I did. I did find it uh, smaller. You clean your ears, dude. <laughs> I found it small, um, smaller in comparison to the Shunyata or the Opus. Um, but again, it's still a big sound stage. I mean, we're still we're I'm being I'm being very critical. Yeah, like, yeah. It's still a big sound stage. Both because the speaker does open up, and let's not even talk about the monos, which will go nameless for now. Um, there is a lot of they have a lot of wing spread, right? Yeah. Um, so there's no sm shortness of a sound stage here, by any so means. I, but I have been here listening to Mike Celeste for seven months now. Yeah, yeah. And I've listened to these songs repeatedly, many sure. many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's easier to gauge what happened. When you've been listening, listening to a specific component for a long time, for sure. That you know, remember your time. Let's is, pick it apart, dude. Yeah. After this break or whatever, let's pick it apart. Let's go to the songs and tell me where you hear it sound bigger and point it out to me, because I want to hear what you hear. Okay, no, yeah, I, go I, right I, here I, at this spot. It's I, bigger, I, I, and then I, I'll, if it is, man, I'll t I'll be like, yeah, I, you're right. I think, and we can probably. You this know, is going to go into, mo into tomorrow, we, dude. <laughs> we can use a third year yeah. set of years, too, yeah. to quickly analyze what happens here. And I think, unfortunately, guys, the best seat is the middle. I mean, yep. that is really where you are going. You're in the cabin of the presentation. That's where you're going to hear the best. Um, uh, on the sides, you get an, a, a taste of things, but not like in the center, yeah. the sweet spot, where the Wilsons are. The yeah. yeah, their, their, their time sure. alignment is for this seat. Yeah, yeah so, you can tell. We're going to do it again, and my goal here will be to point out, we're going to use like maybe three songs, two minutes each. Yeah. Let's just we'll do two, two, three songs, six minutes, again, the same songs, and then come back and see if you found the same. Yeah. Thing. And then I'll point out the things, too, that I heard. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's fine. So we're going to come right back. Okay. Stay tuned. Two and two. <laughs> All right. What did you hear? I, I want to know what she heard. From the side, it's hard, but... Yeah, and tell them the truth. You know